So it's day three of my trip, Wednesday. I had contemplated staying till tomorrow or possibly Friday, but I've been watching the water level here in the lake over the last few days, and it's dropped about uh, two to three inches over the course of three days, so I'm expecting the creek uh, inflows into here are going to be quite shallow on my way out. Uh, they were already getting pretty low on the way in, so to avoid any uh, extra adversity on the way out, I think I'm going to uh, pack up around noon today, start making my way back out uh, through a couple lakes and back to my truck. So try to get a few hours of fishing in now, hopefully hook up with some decent fish. As you've seen, uh, it's been quite a successful trip here over the last couple days, so I'm going to throw a couple different baits today, a couple different color patterns, see if I can cue in on uh, anything else that these fish might be wanting. So, enough talking, let's get to fishing. So the bike's a little bit slower this morning, so I've switched things up to the Z-Man TRD tube. I believe it's the Canadian craw pattern. <laughs> I think I just caught the smallest fish of the trip. <laughs> Oh, self-release. Didn't even get a chance to put him on the hog draw. Okay, there must be a school of little ones here. Hey! <laughs> Can't even get myself back into position without these guys coming up and smacking it. Hey! Right. There's gotta be some bigger ones hanging out in here. Fish. Another tiny one. Far cry from the nineteen and a quarter inches I need to upgrade. Just gorgeous fish silver sheen that comes off of them. It's just something.
we'll switch things up again here. We've got the uh, green and white Senko Wafi rigged. Once again, I'm just playing around with things here, seeing what I can get bites on. was kind enough to leave me with my ring though. So I've been playing around with a few different camera angles on this trip. If you wouldn't mind, just leave a comment down below. Let me know uh, what camera angles you enjoy the most. I know some people like seeing where I'm casting, other people like to watch uh, the angler as they're fishing, so let me know what your preference is. Holy jeez, that's a loon. Well, I don't expect to see any fish now. I don't know if you folks saw that. The loon that's been calling out all morning just made a little pass by. Yeah, just surfaced. They're pretty neat to watch swim. It's like they're flying underwater. There's the fish. Stay on. Stay pegged. Very good hook set. Stay pegged. Stay on there, baby. Get them, dragonflies. Man, I love dragonflies. As you guys probably noticed, I've had horseflies and deer flies buzzing around my head and bugging me all morning. And then a couple dragonflies just came in and took care of business and ate them both.
because I can work that into another little tip. If you're on a lake or a river and you're looking for a campsite, you have multiple options available. If you want to stay away from the bugs, keep an eye out for dragonflies. There's a bunch of dragonflies buzzing around the water where you want to camp. That's guaranteed to keep the bug count down, keep the pesky mosquitoes, black flies, horse flies, etc. at bay. Ah, <laughs> spoke too soon. It's not like there's been a lack of catching on this trip. Alright, with letting a couple self-release. to noon, just off to take down camp, and like I said, make my way out. So I was just getting ready to head home, and I happened to look out across the lake and noticed a bunch of smoke coming out from this point. Now there's no campsite down here, but when I was going along the shoreline fishing earlier, I did notice that there was a makeshift fire pit. And I would not be surprised if this is popping up from somebody that had a fire here days, if not weeks ago, didn't extinguish it properly. It got down into the duff layer and now it's flaring up now that the wind's going. I'm gonna, I've got a 35 liter dry bag with me Hopefully I can ferry some water in and put this thing out. I'm gonna do a quick assessment and if need be, notify emergency services. Getting a bit closer now. 
You can see this a bit of fire up on shore. I'm gonna beach my boat on this side as far away from the flames as possible. I see flames on that side. Out on the point, which is right around where the fire pit was. Okay, I'm up on shore. Time to do a quick primary survey, see what's going on here. As you can hear, everything is just crispy dry. What do we got? We got shoreline, and look at that. That's where the old fire pit was. I could see it while I was fishing for bass right out here. All right, I'm gonna put you down, start putting out some of these flames. Back in a bit. So quick update, I don't know if you heard that there, but I got in contact with 911. They're gonna send in a crew and I'm gonna keep working away here. This takes me back to my wildfire fighting days in BC. Oh, kinda under equipped with just this dry bag, but we gotta get her done. It's all part of being in the backcountry. As you folks can likely hear, ministry's working away behind me. They got their way jacks going. They're putting some water on the hot spots. Probably gonna fire up their saws pretty soon. Here it's gonna get loud. They're gonna drop a few of the uh, snags and a few of the trees that are still burning away. 
Uh, all I can say is that was a slog and a half. Um, big shout out to Outdoor Research. This 35 liter durable dry sack just saved the day. I don't know if this would have spread into anything much bigger. It was in a little uh, protected bay here, but it's better safe than sorry. Um, it's not something I was just gonna let burn itself out or uh, hope for the best and leave and turn a blind eye. So let's take a walk and take a survey of the damage. Here you can see they got their way jack set up. Doing some mop up. This whole back bay has been burnt. The cedar that's still smoking away here in this group of three was candling earlier. It blew the top out of it and was burning away down here. Threw water on it, pulled the fuel out into the water. Now all along the edge of the forest here, there's the hot spots and there was some candling. Some of the old dead cedars. As you can see, there's still a little bit of smoke. Those are all little spots that will have to be dealt with before the crew heads out. It was uh, a little bit tricky getting the crews in here. There was response both from the local department and from the Provincial Ministry of Natural Resources and Forests. I have very limited cell reception out here and the dispatcher was having a hard time hearing me. Luckily I was able to get them half decent directions in here and one crew came in by land while the other crew came in by helicopter. This is pretty well the extent of the burn here. few more areas where you can see where all the undergrowth went up quick. All of these areas I dosed with water, carrying it with the dry sack, back and forth from the lake. I'm not sure exactly how much time has elapsed. It feels like 10 minutes, but I'm sure it's been hours. And I still got to make my way out of camp tonight. Well, that was quite the conclusion to this trip. I've still got to finish taking down camp, make my way through the creeks and marshes and swamps and lakes in order to get back to my truck. And I haven't even looked at what time it is, but I'm guessing it's around 4.30, 5 o'clock. And I've got at least, I would say, three hours worth of travels ahead of me just to get back to my truck. So. I don't know if I'll have much time for making video on the way out, so if I don't check back in with you, thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed the video series and the little bit of extra bonus action at the end. It's not what I was uh, anticipating, but these things happen, and when they do, there's only one thing to do, and that's take action. So until next time, live your pursuit.